Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create a login form using Java, MySQL, and Visual Studio Code. So first of all, it is necessary to install MySQL server. In my case, I am using Exam, which already includes MySQL. So for more information how to install Exam, you can see the video link that is available in the description. Now let's go to phpMyAdmin. And let's create a new database. So I will call it my store. Let's click on create. So this is the database that I have created. We have just to click on it and then let's click on SQL. So here I will just paste the SQL statement that allows me to create the table users. Of course you can find this statement in the description of this video. Now let's scroll down and let's click on go. And here we can see that the table has been created. So let's click on structure. Then let's click on insert. Now let's create a new user. I will call it Will Smith. Let's provide it with an email. Then we need to provide the phone number. And the address. Also let's provide the password. So here we can see that I did not provide the ID because the ID is auto incremental. Let's click on go. And here we can see that the row has been inserted correctly. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code. So with Visual Studio Code it is necessary to install an extension called Java Extension Pack. So we have just to click on this button. And here we have to type Java Extension Pack. Then we need to select this first extension. It is from Microsoft and then we need to install it. In my case it is installed correctly. Now let's click on this Explorer button. And to create a new project we have just to click on this button. Create a Java project. In this field I will select No Build Tools. Then I want to create my project on the desktop. So I will create a new folder called Java Projects. And inside this folder I will create my new Java project. I will call it Login For. Let's hit enter. Now the project has been created and by default it contains this Java class. So let's create a new Java class. To do this I have to make a right click on the source folder. Then new file. I will call it login form.java. Let's hit enter. So this file has been created and by default it contains this Java class. Now let's convert this class into a G-frame. So let's add extends G-frame. Let's hit enter. So this import has been added. We can remove the class name and replace this by star to include all the classes of the package. Now let's create a new method that allows us to initialize the frame. Let's call it initialize. Then let's initialize the frame. So this statement allows us to set the title of the window. This statement allows us to terminate the window when we click on the close button. This statement allows us to set the size of the window. And here we will set a minimum size to this window. This statement allows us to put the window in the middle of the screen. And finally we will make this frame visible. But here we can see that we have an error because we need to import this class. So let's click on quick fix. Then let's import the class. Also we can remove the class name and replace it with start to import all the classes. And now let's create the form. So first of all let's create a new label. So this label will display the text login form. Then let's set the font of this label. So let's define a global variable called main font. So this is the font that will be used by the different components. Then let's create a new label and let's set its font. 
So this label will display the text email. Then let's create a new text field, but I want it to be a global variable, so I will just declare it here. Let's call it TF like text field email. And let's initialize it just here. Now let's create a new label that displays the text password. Then let's create the password field that allows the user to provide the password. So I want the password field to be a global variable, so I will just create it here. Let's call it PF like password, password. And let's initialize it here. Now let's create the panel that will contain these different components. I will call it forum panel. And it will use a grid layout. So here zero means that the number of rows is undefined, so we can add any number of rows. And one means that we have one single column. These are the margin between the different components. Now let's add these different components to this panel. Then let's add this panel to the frame. And the frame by default it uses a border layout. So I will put this panel in the north of the frame. Then let's create a new panel that will contain two buttons and that will be located in the south of the frame. So first let's create two buttons, the login button and the cancel button. Let's start with the login button. And let's add a listener to this button called btn login. So this interface is not recognized, so we need to import it. So let's click on quick fix, then import action listener. Now we need to implement the methods of this interface. So let's click on quick fix, then add unimplemented methods. So this method will be executed when we click on the login button. What I want to do here is to check if the user is authorized to use the application or not. So first, let's read the email and the password. Then let's create a new class called user that contains the data from the database. So I will call this file user.java. So this class contains public variables that allows us to store the data of the user from the database. So in the database, I have the name of the user, the email, the phone number, the address, and the password. Now let's save this file. And let's call the method getAuthenticatedUser. So this method requires the email and the password of the user. So if this user is found in the database, this method will return a valid user object that contains the data of the authenticated user. But if this method fails, it will return null. So if the user is authenticated correctly, the user object will not be null. In this case, we need to create the main frame. And also we need to destroy the login form. But if the user object is null, this means that the login or the password are wrong. In this case, we will display this message. Now let's implement this method. So this method requires the email and the password. And here we have the information that allows us to connect to the database. So we will connect to the database called MyStore using the root user and no password. This statement allows us to establish the connection with the database. And here we will create a prepared statement that allows us to execute this SQL query. So in this SQL query, we will try to find the user in this table where the email is the provided email and the password is the provided password. 
Then we will provide the email and the password to this prepared statement. Then we will execute the statement and we will read the result. And finally, we will create the user object if we find the user in the database. So this is the user object that will be returned by this method. So here we can see that we will close the connection with the database. And we will return this user object. Then let's import the missing classes. So here I can remove the class name and replace it with a star to import all the classes. And like this all the errors will disappear. Now let's add the cancel button. And let's add a listener to this button. Then let's implement the methods of this interface. So this method will be executed when we click on the console button. What I want to do here is to destroy the login form. So let's call the method dispose. Then let's create the panel that will contain the two buttons. So this panel is called buttons panel. Now let's add the two buttons to this panel. And let's add the buttons panel to the south of the frame. Now we need to create the main frame that will be displayed when we click on the login button. So this is the main frame that we need to create. So this class is of type gframe. So let's add extends gframe. Let's hit enter. Then let's remove the class name and let's replace it with star. Then let's create the method that allows us to initialize this frame. I will call it initialize and it requires a user object. Now let's initialize the frame. So let's set the title to this frame. When we click on the close button of this frame, I want to destroy the frame. I will set a size to this frame and I will display this frame in the middle of the screen. And finally, I will make this frame visible. Now let's create the main panel of this frame. I will call it info panel. And it uses a grid layout with any number of rows and two columns. So let's import this class. But here we cannot find the class in this list. So let's add it just here. Then let's display the data of this user in this panel. And now let's add this panel to the north of the frame. Now let's save this file and to test the application we have to go to login form and here let's create the main method. So let's create an object of type login form. Then let's call the method initialize of this object. Now let's save the file and let's run the application. So this is the obtained window. We can improve it by adding some margin to the form panel which is located in the north and to the buttons panel which is located in the south. So this is the form panel. Let's add some margin to this panel. And also let's add the margins to this buttons panel. Now let's go to main frame and let's add some margins to this panel. Now let's save this file. Let's go to login form and let's save this file. Now we need to download the MySQL connector for Java and we need to add it to this project. So let's type MySQL connector for Java. 
then let's go to this first link in this page we have to select platform independent then let's download this zip file in this page we have to click on no thanks now let's save this zip file so I will save it on the desktop so I need to extract this jar file then let's open the folder that contains our java project it is this folder then login form then let's paste the jar file into the lib folder so under lib we can see that this jar file has been added now let's run the application so this is the obtained interface let's log in using the user that we have added to the database now let's click on login and here we obtain this window with the information of the authenticated user if I click on this close button the application will be stopped now let's run the application again and let's click on login so this time we have this error message if I click on cancel the application will be stopped let's run the application again and let's login using the registered user let's click on login so in this window we can see that the text is very small it is possible to increase the size of this text so let's do this so here I will obtain all the components of this panel and I will set the font of the different components now let's save this file let's go to login form and let's run the application now let's provide the email and the password and we can see that the font has been modified it is also possible to use a dark theme with this application so let's close the application let's go to the browser and let's type java flat life let's hit enter then let's go to this first link it is on formdev.com in this page let's click on download then let's click on this button in this page we have to click on downloads then jar then we need to save this jar file so I will save it on the desktop now let's close this page and in this previous page let's scroll down and to use the dark theme I have to copy this code then let's go to the main method but this is a light theme and I need a dark theme so let's go back to the website let's click on themes and here we have this dark theme so let's copy the name of this class and let's paste the class just here now I need to add the jar file to this project so this is the jar file let's add it to the project so let's open the folder of the project and let's open the lib folder let's move this jar file to this folder now we need to import this class so let's click on quick fix and import the class now let's save this file and let's run the application so this time we obtain this dark theme now let's log in and let's click on login and here we can see that this window has a dark theme you can find the source code of this application in the description finally thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to the channel